Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the most famous YouTuber in the world that no one has ever heard of. Okay, so before we get going on this, a um, couple of fun facts. This is a 175 cubic inch engine. The bore size is three and, a, three and three quarters, and the stroke is four inches. There are eight valves, as you can see. Compression ratio on this engine originally was about four to one, and it generated about 20 horsepower or 83 foot pounds of torque. It is connected to the drive line through a two speed planetary transmission that we are going to explore. First, let's unscrooge this. and hang the chain back up on the wall. The next logical step for me anyway is to get this shin basher out of the way. And to do that, it looks like it's already been ground a little bit. So we're going to try and we're going to try and bang that out. Uh, if it doesn't come out, let me get you in a little closer. Careful, I can only tip this so far before it's going to fall. Um, see, on this side it looks like it's it's bumped out, so this must be the head. And then this side is usually peened over, but I see scratch marks on it, so I think somebody I think somebody got into that. Probably my grandfather. We're going to try and get that out. Oh, look at that. Yep. Yep. I just got to Turn it over and then pull it out the top. I'll use this. All right, so this has been off. Somebody's had this out. That was just way too easy. Oh, that's an old crank pin. Ugh. Check it out. I need you to focus. It's got a hole in it. That's one of these. That's that same pin in there. We're going to pound that one out too at some point. Uh, we do need a dish to put our parts in. So we'll do that. Right there. Next is to free up the crank. Now if this is an original 17 crank, Yeah, they cheapened them up because the earlier cranks were uh, a lot nicer than this. So we're going to put that in our parts pile. We're going to put the crank ratchet. That's uh, in very, very good condition. I like it. We're going to put these in the parts pile and we're going to continue on. Now this is... Uh, This is the point where you get to choose what you want to do. I'm looking at the hogshead. I think what I want to do is I want to take that cover off and I want to take the mag plug out so that we can take a look in there. I'm back using my phone again. I didn't like the audio on the on the faux pro. It doesn't support an external mic. I thought I had an external microphone for the phone, but apparently it doesn't record when you when you use the camera. It doesn't record. It's only for phone calls, which is severely disappointing. Okay, this is the mag pickup plug. Okay. All right. There we go. Let me turn some light on so you can see better, maybe. Okay, the mag pickup plug okay, connects to a little button down in there. We'll get to that. Okay, the electricity comes up here. It is AC electricity. It comes up, 
and comes out the top here. This is a plastic insulator, or uh, more accurately, Bakelite, because plastic hadn't been invented yet. Um, this is how you get the electricity out of the magneto to run the coils. So if I can get these screws out, I can at least get them backed off enough so you can see. So this is just a, a little cover here. And then that plastic piece, I don't want to lose the screws, so that plastic piece, this is all one piece. This, this, and this. Um, it's basically just there is an insulator to keep the electricity from jumping from here to here. So this is, it looks like it's in remarkable condition. Uh, that'll clean up good. We'll, we'll do that later. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of the people watching this are familiar with how to clean parts. So I'm probably going to glaze over that a little bit. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Let's get to the inspection cover. You saw this on my oil change on the four door. First oil change in 14 years. If you haven't seen that video, go look it. Go look it up. Um, it was first week in December 2022. Okay, we've got the cover. Notice that this one does not have the screen on the, on the inside, which I will correct that before. Even though this is a, a budget build, you saw the, the mess that came out of that. And I don't think it would be wise to put that back in there without the filter. Um, nobody will see it anyway. So these bands have been backed off. So somebody's been in here. Obviously, there was only two screws. So what I want to check first here, before we go any further, get you where you can see all of these, is I want to, I want to check the pedal travel. And by that I mean with the pedal pressed in, how much travel do we have? And we got about an inch on here at the top. It's almost like I've already measured these, huh? Uh, on the on the clutch pedal, it needs to be all the way that way, which it is, because it's still got a spring in there under tension. And we should have about an inch. There should be zero on this. And if we look at the reverse, you see how much how much movement before it engages. That actually feels like it might be the shaft. I don't think the shaft, I think it's the connection between the pedal and the shaft that's loose there. This is, this is not just worn out. Now on the clutch, we should have about an inch. I've done other videos on this, but we're going to go over it again, given that this is a, uh, a complete series here. So we've got from here to here is, is free. So we've got from there. To there so we've got three inches of pedal travel which means the notches on this are really worn out so I don't know I mean my grandfather said that this was something special so I assume I think he said it came out of a sedan and they weren't driven much back then because they were heavy and slow and hard to make go up hills so all right well we've checked that I can't really check that because that's I'm not that strong. So the next thing we need to do is remove all the bolts all the way around. We've got some of them out already. We've got one here, one here. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Six. There's seven left. So I think I'm going to bring you around the other side, and we'll start taking those out. Hopefully they don't have. Hopefully they don't have um, carter pins in them. So, yeah, hang on. All of these bolts use 9 16 wrench. So, and that's what they look like.
Can't get a bite on that one. Nope. Oh, maybe it did. Nope. Too much crap, maybe? That'll really suck if that's not going to come out. Let's do some picking. Oh, yeah, there's tons of me. Tons of smutch. Smutz. How do you pronounce that? Smutz. Trying to do this in a manner that you can see. Let's see if we can get that socket on now. Oh, yay! Starting to have my doubts. Okay, now these could be problematic. Let's see. Well, that was easy. Except now it's stuck in the wrench. There we go. Okay, got a, a washer and a nut off that one. There was no uh, no uh, wire or quarter pin in there, so that's that's good news. We're gonna put them in our parts pile. And there's one more bolt. And we've got what one, two, three, four left. Four to go. Goes the washer. And the washer, not and bolt. Still got one stuck in there. Now, if you get, if you get, wash, I'm not stuck in there. Easy way to do it. Just go through the hole the tool mounts too. Just slows you down a little bit. Got two more over here. And then we can pull this head off and see what we're looking at. Nope. It ain't coming off. It's a deep socket, it can stay in there. That one can't. <coughs> right, now we should be free. Should be free to remove that. Okay, so next thing we need to do is to remove the hogshead. The next thing we need to do is to break the hogshead free. Let's see if this will do it. Gently. I see one bolt we didn't take out. It's not really stopping me. It is slowing me down. And that is the fourth main. Let's take that out next. There's, the, there's our fourth main. Okay, and what that is, is the other end of the transmission sits in here. Looks like somebody's taken a wire wheel to that. 
curious. Okay, so I don't know what condition this is. We'll have to measure it. So into the parts pile it goes. And as for the rest of this, we're gonna go to option two. See if we can break this glue loose. Up there. Oh, it is still. Am I missing a bolt? Oh, that is on there. Ah, that's why it won't come off. We missed a bolt. Hidden down in here, there's two sneaky little devils. That's why we go easy. I'll put you over here. Two sneaky little devils in here. You thought I would miss you. I did. Where's the top of that one? There it is. There's the top of it. Now I can see it. All that gook was in the way. I couldn't see it. So this one goes in from the bottom. It's the only one that goes in from the bottom. All the rest of these go in from the top. And if I wasn't so rusty, I would have remembered to look there. So now, how about we take that hogshead off? What do you think? Ugh. We'll get to that. We'll get to that when we clean it up and paint it. Fix those notches. But here's the inside of the transmission that you saw in the four-door. I really hope this is recording because if I forgot to push record again I'm going to be upset. Okay, so here we have our bands and our drums. So the way this works is the bands squeeze the drum, they stop that drum and it goes through the gears inside and comes out here. Now if you stop this one, I believe that's, that's reverse, and then you stop this one in the middle here, that's your forward low, and if you stop this one, that's your brake, because it's, it's directly connected to here, as long as the, uh, well, it's directly connected. There's a clutch in here too, but we'll get to, but that's your high speed clutches down in here. There's your low speed drum and your reverse, which apparently rocks the. Now these are. Oh boy. These are not demountable ears. These are the original bands. These might be the original bands for this engine. I'll have to look it up. When we get these clean, I'll have to look them up. But the cotton lining is gone. That's garbage, but the bands themselves we're going to reuse. Depending on which way we go with this project, it's either going to be absolutely bone stock and I put a poll out on YouTube and on Facebook and like three people responded. So that's, that's more than normal. Um, that rivet's in. Oh, that rivet's broken off. Yep. He's floating around in there. 
Okay, so in order to get these out, we're going to do the easy thing. We're going to turn the engine over, which is going to take the pan off, which is our next step anyway. But this, this really does look good. Yeah, this is interesting. All right, let's spin her over. Yeah. This is what makes it hard to film. I can't just reach over and touch the camera with fingers like that, so it makes for editing. Now, one thing I do want to point out here is we have a busted off ear. I think I pointed that out before. And on the other side, we have the ear. Uh, there's a remedy for that. It's either new pan, or if I can find it, I have an original accessory around here someplace that replaces both of these ears, which would be pretty cool to have on the car. So, all right, let's get this rolled over. Get you a little better view here. Heavy. No. Is it me or are these things getting heavy? Good grief. This weighed way more than I thought it would. Let's stop there. Yeah, let's stop there. We can get to the pan and I don't have to get a hernia. problem I see right off the bat with doing this is I don't know if you can see it or not but there's still carter pins in this so I want to get those out it's like all the pins on that side all the bolts are out so on these we have carter pins which tells me that this has never been off. Not since my grandfather got it. Because for him to put these carter pins back in just to put it in storage makes no sense at all. So I don't know what the story is, why he thought this was such a special engine. We're going to find out. All of these pins have to come out. Sometimes I just burn them off with the impact drive. But I figure we'll do it. We'll do it the right way. You know, for the camera. And I am cheating. A little bit. I think I'll do it from this side. I don't know what I did to my knee, but pretty good. Where is the where is the nut? Hello. We are getting quite the collection of nuts and bolts already. I love these magnetic pans. So if you're tuning in late, this is the beginning of the Speedster project. This engine will be rebuilt in front of you. I'm going to rebuild it. We're going to build the rest of the car. And we're going to do it on camera. Oops. 
Man down. We got one more. That doesn't mean that doesn't look stock. What's this? What's going on with you? What is that doing in there? What size is that? We got a metric bolt in here. Get out my communist wrench. Yep. We got a Chinese bolt in here. When do they start making metric around here? 70s? We tried reprogramming all us kids. Well, that ain't going back on the car. We'll, we'll hold on to it, but that ain't going back on the car. The hell of that. There's no communist bolts on this. Okay, I think I got them all. I think I got them all, and I think we can... Well, look at that. Would y'all look at that? We had a casualty. Unexpected casualty. It fell right out. That would have let all the air out. So that's the top one. You want the oil between the two. But it just fell right out. Alright, well... What do you think? Should we? Should we take a peek inside? Will it come right off? Of course not. Did we get all the bolts? I think so. Nope, nope, we didn't. We should said something. It scared me the embarrassment. What is going on over here? It's still got the car pin in it. All right, well, I got it. I mangled it, but I got it. And there's the car pin still in there. I couldn't get it out. So I just said, let it rip. And there was rippage. And it was good. Look them off now. Would you look at that? Now, let me get you back into a position where you can appreciate this view. Here we go. There she is, laid bare. Take a minute to soak this in. I'll give you the tour. All right, here's our transmission again, upside down. Okay, we've got a magneto. This is what makes the electricity. The magnets go around and around and around and pass by these field coils. And that's what creates the electricity for the, mag for the uh, coils to fire the engine. In here, we have the pistons, camshaft, and an oil tube. We also have straight cut gears. This is an original engine. They went to helical after this. We've got cast iron pistons. 
We knew that from the top. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, let's get these bands off here. I know, I know, I'm terrible at filming. I'm doing this all by myself. No film crew. Lousy lighting. Lousy audio. <clears throat> okay, so we got band number one. This is the brake band. <clears throat> it does not look like it's been used much. The pedal cam tells a different story, but the rivets are going every which way but Sunday. We got some going sideways, some going diagonal, some going straight. This one's in bent. So is that factory? Old factory rush job? Could be. We got to cut the clutch. <clears throat> That's falling apart. That's that rivet that broke. That broke loose. That's why that end failed. Got a little bit of unprofessional gap here. And then this one failed too. Come on guys, it's 105 years old. You, you'll be falling apart when you get to 105, too. I'm sure of it. A little bit crumbly. We have here, we have... Can't see what that says. I'm really curious to see if these original bands... Can you see the, the symbol there? Can't make out what it is with the naked eye, but what it is is upside down. There we go. Camera will focus. 839-1 SFCO. If anybody knows what that means, please put it in the comments. Because I'd like to think that these are original. This one doesn't appear to have any writing on it. Let's take a look. Oh, it's got something there. Can't make it out. Maybe we'll be able to see it better when it's clean. On to the reverse band. It's got the same numbers on it. 8291 CSFO. This one seems to be fairly unused as well. They probably were replaced at some point. Basing that by the the brake pedal and the clutch pedal wore worn out, but they could be the original bands, maybe just new linings. Don't know. I don't know. Okay, the next step in this is going to be taking the transmission off. And by taking it off, I mean taking it apart to get it off because I don't want to use my hoist. So I'm going to show you an easy way to take that off. <clears throat> I'm going to do that in the next episode because we're, uh, we're probably pushing an hour right now. And I'm probably boring the hell out of a lot of people. So one thing I do want to point out is this has got itty bitty wires wrapped over in twos. So I don't know if that's original or not. Could be. So 
So yeah, if you like the video, if you made it this far, um, I appreciate a, a thumbs up, a share, a like. Or if you want to help contribute to this project, there is a uh, dollar sign button under the video that you can make a donation or go through Patreon. There's a link in the description for that. Uh, this build will be 100% funded by YouTube. If I have my way, anyway. Um, I've gotten this far through bartering. This was a gift from my grandfather before he died. It's been sitting in my storage for 10 years, 11 years. And it, uh, it is proving to be interesting. I didn't expect those, those straight cut gears in the front. So, yeah. Um, appreciate the help. I appreciate the views. Next episode, transmission. I guess. We'll continue the tear down in pieces. We'll take this off. Then we're going to take that out. And we're going to evaluate everything. See if I can find a local machine shop if we need one, because I don't have the, the tools for honing. I'm hoping we can just put new rings on it and send it down the road. Um, that would be my, my happy goal. Uh, least, at least I do want to get it balanced, because that's, if you got it apart and you, there's a balanced guy near you, just do it. Hopefully we won't have to take the magnets off. I see an A here. I see a 2 here. This could be fun. Alright, well, see you in the next one.